Hi there, and welcome back. Today I'd like to talk about zero trust algorithms and give you a quick demo on just how powerful the big IP is when it comes to zero trust. Now, when I talk about zero trust algorithms, I'm talking more specifically around the NIST 800-207 doc. If you're not familiar with that document, I encourage you to go out and Google, read it. It's a very high level overview architecture of what a zero trust implementation may look like. I know zero trust is confusing for everyone. Everyone's got a solution. Things are not complete. And so today I'm gonna to show you how the big IP addresses from an F5 perspective, zero trust and zero trust algorithms. So in that document, it also covers things like policy enforcement points, policy decision points, the trust algorithm, whether it's contextual or criteria based. So all of those things are part of the big IP access policy manager. And I'm going to show you how those work here in just a moment. So let's take a look at the architecture and get right into the demo. Okay, so here's our architecture for our demo today. Super simple, we've got a single big IP, we've got users coming into that big IP and accessing applications on the back end. There's a little bit of some difference here. The APM or access policy manager is the identity aware proxy. It is also the policy enforcement point, policy decision point, and it is housing the contextual trust algorithm. Now, the algorithm is what makes all the magic happen. It's what's gonna introduce step up authentication when a condition changes. It'll also log users out if so be it. At the very top there, we have an FP con server or risk engine. This is centered around this demo around DOD. So FP con is force protection condition. And so every base has an FP con level. There's, I believe, four or five different levels, normal, alpha, bravo, Charlie, and delta. So a total of five. And so we're gonna be querying that server for telemetry and then taking that data, that JSON payload, and then making a determination on it based on what it matches. At the bottom there, we have a monitoring server. This is running a Python script that is checking both the FPCon server for its FPCon level and then also monitoring the big IP and seeing if users have been logged out because of a certain condition was matched. You'll see the server farms in the back. These could be any number of web applications. They could also be VDI, could be RDP. As long as they're connecting through the identity where proxy on the big IP, we can terminate sessions, all users, if we wanted to based off a certain condition. All right, so let's jump right into the demo. Okay, so here is our FPCon system application. Now this is really just an API that I built and it is really a GUI wrapped around an API. So I wanted to show how easy it is to change the base level security and use that on the big IP for telemetry for to, to make a, a decision. And so here we have, we can see the base name here is Hanscom, which is Hanscom Air Force Base and security level is currently at alpha. And because we have some logic built in to our big IP to say, if, out, if the security level is at alpha, we are not gonna ask for any step up authentication. If it changes, let's say, let's, bra let's say Bravo, then we may do something. So let's log into our webtop, webtop being our portal on the big IP. This is the PEP, the PDP, this is our identity aware proxy, right? It's the gateway for all of our applications and servers. If you're, if you're in the DOD, you're familiar with this page, it is a banner page that's presented to all users that log into a system. I'm going to click OK to proceed. And because this is a DOD system, I'm simulating a cat card login in here. Because I don't have a cat card, I'm using a certificate, a soft cert. So the system is asking me, this is mutual TLS. I have to have a certificate to present to the big IP. This is considered much more secure than a username login. And so I'm gonna click OK to select that certificate and I should be logged right into the applica application, the webtop. You can see I was, I was not asked for a username password or anything else. Certificate auth is all I needed. And so now I'm presented with these applications. And for me, I have these three applications that are available to me. 
I've got my Office 365, which is SAML, right? I'm using the big IP as an IDP here. And then I am single signing on right into Office 365. So it makes things very easy, very seamless for your users. So let me close that out. I also have a top secret Air Force blog site here, which is not top secret at all. It's just for demo purposes. And you can see it is simply a WordPress site for demo, right? It's a hello world type application. And I wasn't asked for any type of two factor here because we're at a certain level and we have logic built into the big IP to make that determination. Okay, so let's change our security level now. Let's say something happened and we want to raise our security level to Bravo. Let's update. We are now at Bravo. Let's take a look at our monitoring server. You can see that it's already picked it up. It's reading Bravo now. Security level has changed. Let's click back on our application. It hasn't logged this out. However, if I were to click on anywhere in the application, I am now asked for additional credentials. And that's because we have logic that trust algorithm is built in. It's querying that third party source and we have logic built in that says anything higher than alpha, we need to step up auth. So now I'm gonna click continue. I'm gonna be asked for my government ID, which happens to be my nickname. And then I'm gonna enter in my super secret pin. I'm gonna log in. And because I wanted to be super, super security conscious here, I've introduced an additional layer of multi-factor, uh, and that's Duo. So I have Duo set up here, and it's on my soft token. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Approve, and I'm boom, I'm now let back into the application. So you can see how easy, how seamless, how powerful that really is when you change and make a change on a third party and how easy it is for the big IP to ingest that telemetry. So let's, let's try a different example here. Now we've got our domain controller, which is a, a Windows server sitting behind the big IP. And we are going to connect We have different logic built into this VDI resource. And so what we're gonna do now is we're connected, right? What we're gonna do now is we're gonna introduce, um, we're gonna introduce a Delta level. And Delta is going to be the highest level that we, we do here. And that means, well, that means that we have logic built in to log off all users on the big IP because we're at a severe level and we don't want anyone connected to the system. So let's click update. We can see that the update was made. Let's take a look at our monitoring server. It sees Delta already. If we come over to our system and we can see that we have now been logged off our VDI system. We come back to our dynamic web top, we try to click anywhere, and our, we can see that our session has been ended. We are completely been logged off. Now, I have logic built in that will allow the user to access the web top still, because you might, for whatever reason, want them to access the web top. However, if I were to click on the application, I'm now presented with this message, that uh, access to the systems while threat level remains at Delta will be denied. And so if I click to acknowledge, I'm sent back to the web top in this case. You could log them off, but it's really up to you. It's just, it shows just how flexible the big IP access policy manager is. It's really a Swiss army knife. And I think it, I just demonstrated how easy it is to bring in third party telemetry to make a zero trust decisions around a zero trust contextual dynamic algorithm. So until next time, take care. Thank you.